done a five senses meditation before, but I added some things to it. So I call it the seven senses meditation. So just come to any kind of comfortable seat so that you're not feeling like you have to adjust a lot. Maybe that means that you stack up a couple pillows or a blanket. Find a place where your knees can kind of fall forward. So that might mean that you just put the tailbone close to the edge of your blanket or tailbone or uh, pillow. And let your hands rest on your knees. Just roll those shoulders up into the ears. Take a nice deep breath into the upper lobes of the lungs and then roll those shoulder blades back down towards the spinal column. Let's do that a couple times just to get any of the residual tension out of the shoulders. One more time, roll it back and down and then just kind of place the shoulder blades close to the spinal column. Let the elbows be loose. Close your eyes for a moment and find your breath. Find out what you brought with you this morning. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling completely. Adjust your spine. Maybe pull that chin back just a bit so you feel your spinal column empty up into the brain stem in a nice straight line now let the eyes gradually open and focus on something maybe four three or four feet in front of you and then start to let the peripheral peripheral vision expands so that you're aware of what's on the side of you without turning your head. And now maybe just using your visual senses, find something that maybe you've never noticed before that you can see. So name it in your mind, silently in your mind, whatever it is. Pick five things you've never seen before, never noticed, at least recently, and name them in your head. And then closing your eyes. Using your hearing sense now, listen for four things that you hadn't noticed before. And this is a little easier when you're outside with all the nature sounds, but start to listen carefully for the subtle sounds you may not have noticed. Start to name them off in your mind. Now starting to go a little deeper. Considering the sense of touch, name three things in your mind that you can feel touching your body. Any kind of sensation of touch. Observe it. Three things that you hadn't noticed before. Now coming into the sensation of taste.
take a swallow and observe two tastes that you may have not noticed before and name them in your mind. You might notice even a metallic taste, salt. And going a little deeper, coming to the sense of smell. Start to softly breathe in the air around you and see if you can name one scent that you had never noticed before. This is very subtle, so take a moment. Now, coming to a sixth sense. Name some emotion. Now, they don't often call emotion senses, but it definitely is a sense. When you walk into a room, you can sense the atmosphere in the room. You can sense people's feelings. See if you can sense your own emotion right now. Just name one emotion that you're sensing within yourself. And finally, a seventh sense. Bring to your heart and mind something that you know absolutely to be true, yet nobody ever taught it to you or told it to you. Something that you know in your heart of hearts is absolutely true. And bringing your palms together and honoring that one truth. Now, while that is a very personal truth for each of you, very often it is the same truth for each of us. So bow in and honor that simple truth and maybe dedicate the rest of this practice that you will flow through this morning. Maybe even dedicate the rest of your actions of your day to that one truth. And then when you're ready, just roll over onto your hands and knees and come into table pose. I will remove this cat from the room. <laughs> And once you come into your table pose, spread your fingers apart. Just come up onto all 10 fingertips. So your weight's emptying into just the fingertips, the thumb tips. And you're going to look at that pinky finger. Spread your pinky finger away from your ring finger. And spread the ring finger away from your middle fingers. And spread your middle finger away from your pointer fingers. And then let your thumb start to stretch towards one another and then let all of your weight come on to your palms. So you're going to stretch out those palms, that connective tissue, very consciously here. 
Gaze is between the hands. And now starting to come into some cat cows, round the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Then inhale, roll those shoulders away from the ears, looking up into cow pose. Nice deep breath into cow as you open the lungs. When you need to exhale, let the cat, cat pose emanate from the belly button. So pulling it up into the spine. And then as you need to start your inhale, let your belly lower, get chin lifts. A couple more times. Just make it feel good this morning. Go as slow or as fast as it feels right. And coming into a neutral spine, looking over your right shoulder to your right hip. So you form a little C shape out of the left rib cage. Nice deep breath into that left rib cage. And then to the opposite side. So wag your tail over to the right. Look over the left shoulder. Feel those little connective tissue, or the left so connective tissue in that right side, intercostal muscles. And then come to a neutral spine. And bring your awareness to that right leg. You're going to kick the right leg out behind you and just bring the ball of the foot to the mat to start. Press the right calf away. You feel that nice stretch all the way from the right heel up to the calf, up into the hip. Now plug that femur bone into that right hip socket and lift the right leg up. Toes are pointing down for now. And then we're going to point the toes. And then flex the foot. And then point the toes. And then flex the foot. And then point the toes. And you can stay here or sweep that left arm over out in front of you. So if you have any kind of shoulder issues here, then you don't need to engage the arm. Maybe draw that navel into your kidneys for a little more stability. Nice deep breath in here. And then lower that left hand, lower that right knee. Tuck the toes under, rock the hips back. We're just going to stay here as we open up the bottoms of the feet here. Take your gaze in between your thighs. A little round. Lower back should feel good. And then come up onto the hands and knees. Now, if all your wrists are tender here, which they may be, you can also come up onto your fists. So make fists. And we'll come to the second side. If you need to make fists, make fists. And then stick your left leg out behind you. Press the left heel away. So on the ball of the foot to start. Now start to suck that femur bone into the hip socket and lift that leg up. Try to keep the hips even and level. Now point the toes. Flex the foot. Point the toes. Flex the foot. Point the toes and flex the foot. Now maybe sweep your right arm forward, rolling that right thumb up into the ceiling. It helps to engage about two fingers below the belly button, drawing that up. This helps with stability. And by the way, that always helps with stability no matter where you're at. Standing, walking, going up steps. And then lower that right hand, lower the left knee. Tuck your toes under, rock the hips back, and you can stay back here in this puppy dog kind of pose, looking underneath your chest, or pick the hips up for downward dog. Once you come, if you come to downward dog, you can bicycle it out, pressing your right heel in, bend your left knee, press your left heel in, bend your right knee. And then come into some stillness wherever you're at, whether you're in that prepped pose or full down dog. Gazes between your thighs. And then lowering down your knees if you're up. 
This time, stepping that right foot forward so you're at a 90 degree angle. Bring your hands to the inside of the foot. Maybe walk that knee out an inch or two so you have room to snug that right shoulder right into the knee. Now, planting the right hand, twist to your left. So you're bringing that left hand to the waist. If the shoulder's okay, you can start to lift that left arm up, gazing up into the left hand. If your shoulder's tender, just sweep it behind your back and reach for that right hip crease. Rolling your left armpit back, gazing up. One more breath. And then lower that left hand down and twist to your right. Hand can come to the waist, stack right shoulder over left, or sweep that right arm up. If you're feeling very zestful this morning, you can tuck your left toes under and pick that left knee up for dragonfly pose, but it's not necessary. Whether your knee is up or down, bring both hands back to the inside of the foot. Walk your hands out and start to bend your elbows. Knee can be up or down. You choose, as always, it's your practice. And as you melt the heart, soften the shoulders. Notice where you have brought habitual tension or maybe a little bit of anticipation into the pose and let it go. And then if that left knee is up, drop it down. Walk your hands back. And continue to walk your hands back so that you can flip the right toes up. This is half Hadama posture, half monkey pose. This can be pretty intense on that right hamstring this morning. So no need to force it. Just move to the point where you sense your body starting to resist and stay there. Then take a nice deep breath. Exhale completely, soften your wrists, shoulders, neck. Notice if as you surrender, you can go a little bit deeper, maybe a millimeter or two or three. Most importantly, breathe. Most importantly, breathe out completely so you make room for the inhale. And now coming back up onto that right foot, bending the knee. So by now, if you're knee is tender you can double up or triple up your mat or bring a blanket underneath you as we stand on left knee right knee bend hands can come to that right knee and just sort of rock back and forth so you can observe what's going on in this left hip flexor moving the hips forward and back the next time that right knee is forward you can choose to stay right here or bring the hands to the back of the skull and press the hand, head into the hands, lifting the heart. So this crescent moon type pose forms a crescent shape in the back of your body. Just start to drape your shoulder blades down the back, lift the sternum. Maybe you engage your arms. And if your arms are up, everybody lower the hands down, step that right knee back, tuck the toes under, rock the hips back, and come into either that prep dog pose or downward dog, hips high, chest low. Just observe here, make this like a little barometer of... The body, notice that right side might feel a little lighter than the left. Your right heel makes it sway to the floor a little easier than the left. And lowering your knees down. Step your left foot forward. Walk that knee and foot out maybe a couple inches so you can make room for the hands to come to the inside of the foot. 
snug that shoulder into the left knee. Make sure there's a little bit of a connection and then twist to your right. Right hand can stay on the waist. It can move behind the waist, reaching for your left hip crease. Maybe it reaches up, twisting to your right, looking up into that right palm as the hand is raised. Lowering that right hand, plant the palm and twist to your left. Find a place for that left hand. Waist behind the back or raised up. And if you engage that right leg on the first or the leg on the first side, this time you can tuck your toes under and lift the knee up for dragonfly twist on the opposite side. And lower both hands down back to the inside of the foot. You can keep that right knee up or down and walk the hands forward so that you can start to bend the elbows. Doesn't matter how far, but if you find that, that you can't stay in the moment that you're struggling against the posture, just drop the knee and just go as far as the body. Plant that left foot onto the floor and just start to rock that knee forward and back forward and back forward and back and next time that knee moves forward you can stay here a little tuck of the tailbone maybe move the hands up behind your head press the skull into the hand lift the stern and drop the shoulder blades down You open the front side of the body. Sometimes it's pretty humbling. Maybe you bring the hands up behind you, moving the arm bones behind the ears. Lots of different places to be to feel the body open up. All the way from that pubic bone up to the sternum. And then lowering the hands down. Plant the hands. Step that left knee back. Tuck the toes, rock the hips back, either stay here or come into downward dog. We forgot Hanuma, so we're going to lower that left, the knees back down, step your left foot forward again, and start to move the hips back until these left toes flip up. Knee works to be straight, but don't force it. This can be a pretty intense hamstring stretch. You can move your hands to the inside if this is really intense. Just move your hands to the inside and keep moving the hips back. If you're more flexible, let your sternum come over the knee, hands on either side of the leg, and take a nice deep breath in. Exhale completely. Take a nice deep breath in, exhale completely, surrender any kind of anticipation. And then stepping that left knee back next to right. Tuck your toes under. We're actually going to come into a yoga squat from here. So you can bring your feet about hip width distance apart, but take your knees wider than your hips. And start to walk your hands back to your knees. So for some people, maybe some surgeries or injuries, this is far enough. But if you can, start to pick the knees up Send the hips back and let your chest just drape between the two thighs. Your elbows and chin soften. And this should feel pretty good on the lower back, whatever you've chosen. Find your breath. And then 
plant your hands and start to straighten your legs. So you're coming into a forward fold. Take your feet wider than your hips. Even if you don't need to for now, take your feet wider than your hips. So you're in a little wider legs, forward fold. And let the palms come to either the floor or your shins. So if you're very tight, let the hands come to the shins. This is still a nice forward fold. Otherwise, slide the hands down to the ankles or the floor. And just start to transfer your weight from left foot to right foot. From left to right. Left to right. And then from front to back. So the balls of the feet to the heels. To the balls of the feet to the heels. And then pick up all ten toes, spread them apart, and then place them down into the mat one at a time. From pinky toe, middle toe, and then root down through the ball of that big toe. Soft bend in your knees. You can walk your hands up the body. And then chin is the last to come up and roll the shoulders up into the ears, down the back. Close your eyes, find your breath. Now bring your right hand to your right waist. Sweep that left arm up. Press the right hand into the hips so that you can side bend to your right and your sort of facilitating the twist by pressing the hand into the waist. And then lifting up, plant that left hand on your left waist, sweep the right arm up, press the hand into the waist and hip and side bend to your left. Feel good this morning as you wake up. This is a nice, it's a nice stretch to do every morning, actually. And inhale, lift up, bring both arms up. Sweep both arms up. Come up onto your balls of your feet here. Lifting up, press the floor away with the balls of the feet. Reverse your palms, press the air away, and lower down. And then reverse the palms, lift up. Uh, all right, we're going to jump, jump, jump from here. All right, I think this is our firecracker pose. That's it. That's our holiday acknowledgement. <laughs> Lower the hands down. Come down onto your heels. Now we're going to come to the back of your mat. Come to the back of your mat and step your right foot forward. Prepare for warrior one. Bend that right knee. Move that left hip forward, right hip back. You can stay here with the hands on your hips or move the hands behind your skull or up into the air. We did the same posture on the knee. The crescent moon. But now we're coming into warrior one. Now come to warrior two. Right arm forward, left arm back. Now straightening that right leg, reach forward, 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 and down for Trikonasana. Right hand can come to the shin, ankle, floor, left arm up, or maybe just swim it behind your back, rolling that left shoulder blade behind you. Couple breaths here. Notice any resistance to the posture. And then bring the hand behind you and then down to the floor. Start to move your hands on either side of right foot and bounce your left foot forward. So we prepped for this pose, for this pyramid pose with Hanuma pose, monkey pose. So come up onto your fingertips for length. Pull that right hip back and forward fold, chin towards shin. A couple more times. Inhale, up onto the fingertips. Pull that right hip back and forward fold, chin towards shin. One more time. Up, find your length. Exhale, find your depth. Now hold the fold, but continue to breathe. And 
plant your hands, step that right foot back next to left. Come into a plank pose. So you're in a nice straight line. You want to knit your lower rib cage towards your navel. And then drop your knee. Find your breath. And then tuck your toes under, rock your hips back, downward dog. This time walk your hands back towards your feet, come back to your forward fold. Walk your hands up your body, or if you're feeling stronger, you're going to reach forward and then up using the strength of your back. And then hands alongside the body. Coming back to the back of your mat. Step your left foot forward, right foot flat for warrior one on your left. Left hip moves back a little bit, right hip forward. Find your warrior one. You can keep your hands here on the waist, behind the head, or move it up into the sky. Sink it down one more degree. So you're working towards parallel with that left Five, I'm moving directly down, not forward. And now warrior two, left arm forward, right arm back. Make any adjustments. Typically you need to move this left foot in a couple inches. Gaze is over the left middle finger. Now straighten that left leg. Find your length, reach forward, 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 and then tilt it in. Trikonasana, triangle pose, left hand onto the shin, maybe ankle, maybe to the floor. Gaze, if the hand is up, gaze up into that right hand. Take a couple breaths here. Feel your stability in this pose. It's helpful in Trikonasana to sort of isometrically pull those feet towards one another and draw your navel in and then let that right arm come back behind you and continue to circle it down to the floor bring your left hand outside the foot right hand inside and bounce your back foot forward so that you can even out your hips take a deep breath in up onto your fingertips and exhale, fold, chin towards shin, a couple more times. Inhale, get your length, pull that left hip back. Exhale, chin towards shin. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. This time, hold the fold, but continue to breathe. There's a tendency to hold the breath in anticipation of what comes next, just breathe. Plant your hands, step your left foot back next to right. Come all the way back into plank. So move your feet back further than if you were in down dog and come into plank. Knit your lower ribs together. And then dropping your right knee down, just your right knee. We're going to come into supported side plank. Let your left foot go flat. Stack your left shoulder over right and sweep your left arm up. Maybe over the ear for a nice stretch, but if the shoulder doesn't like it, don't do it. Now side plank, you can stay on your knee if you're just feeling experimental today. You can straighten both legs out and come to full side plank by stacking left foot over right, but not necessary. Just another experiment, another place to feel your body, know how you react. If your knee is off the ground, put it back down and lower both hands. Come back to table and come to your second side. Start to stack your right shoulder over left, right foot flat to the floor. Bring that right arm up and over your ear. 
lift the right rib cage. You can stay here, or if you're experimental this morning, then stack your right foot onto your left, coming into full side plank. And if your left knee is up, lower it down. Everybody come on to table pose and then child's pose. Big toes together. Knees apart. Sink your hips back and let your chest fall through the between the thighs. You can make a pillow with your arms and bring your forehead onto the arms or bring your forehead onto the mat. Just let all effort go. A little more of a yin posture when you just allow gravity to do all the work. Now coming up onto just your forearms. Interlace your fingers together. So this is a dolphin prep pose. Just start to rock your chin over the interlaced hands and then rock it back. Moving the hips back. Rock the chin forward. Rock the hips back. And if you're feeling a little more experimental this morning, you can tuck your toes under, pick the hips up, and then continue to rock all the way to now in your arms and shoulders moving the chin over the hands and moving the chin back back to dolphin pose one more time wherever you're at if the knees are up lower and back down and come all the way onto your belly coming into sphinx pose elbows stay under the shoulders palms flat just let your, your heels fall out to the side. Your navel is into the floor. The pubic bone's into the floor. You're pressing the floor away with the arms so that you have space. You want to bring space between the earlobes and the shoulders. So press the floor away. Get buoyant through the chest, looking up or forward. Palms are flat. Now trying to keep that upper back strength, but move the arms behind you. Trying to keep your chest off the floor. Open the palms to the ceiling, but let the knuckles come to the floor. You can stay here or come into uh, locust posture, lifting both legs up. Very strong pose. Lots of variations in between. Balancing on that solar plexus. And then lower the legs and come onto your left ear. Relax everything. Arms alongside the body. Fill the body cavity with the breath. Feel that diaphragm move into the floor and away from the floor as you inhale and exhale. And come back onto your forehead. And we're going to either do that uh, locust posture you just did or come into bow pose. So if you're coming into bow, kind of shimmy your knees back as far as you can. So you get long through the thighs and then bend one knee at a time to grab your ankles or the tops of your feet. And you can just stay right there. This is a nice stretch for the hip flexors, for the thighs. Or you can press the feet into the hands, hands into the feet, and lift everything up for a full bow. Just 
whatever you've chosen, release. Slide the hands underneath the shoulders and press back into child's pose, releasing that lower back. Coming up on the hands and knees, just allow your right hip to fall to the floor. So you're on your right thigh, your right hip. Pick that left foot up. You can either move it in front of the shin or all the way outside your thigh, coming into a twist. Now if you have really tight hips here, you can straighten that bottom leg. This is also a very effective twist, just like this. Sweep your left hand behind you, close to your tailbone. And imagine you're moving your intestines across this left thigh. So move your belly across the thigh, then the ribs, then the left shoulder, and maybe cross that right elbow outside the thigh. Or just hold on to it with the crook of your elbow as you use your internal strength to twist to your left. One more twist, one more effort, and then unwind to the opposite side and bring this left foot inside your thigh for a head to knee pose. So facing this right leg, the straight leg, you can bring that knee straight or bent to start. Just drape your body over that thigh, holding on to the shin. And eventually start to slide that right heel out. If your hands naturally come to your foot, grab the foot and bring your head towards your knee. A little twisting action here. Dropping that left shoulder down in line with the right. Lifting up, and then come on to the opposite side, right sole of the foot into the left thigh. Start to forward fold, head to knee pose on the left. Let gravity gradually lower you down onto this left leg. Nice deep inhales, nice long exhales. And lifting up if you're still folding. Pick your right knee up and cross it outside your left thigh. You can keep the bottom leg straight or bend it. And once you settle in, start to move your belly to the right. Like you want to cross the belly outside the right thigh. And the right rib cage, the right armpit, looking over that right shoulder. The left elbow outside the thigh is just a little cropped allow you to go a little deeper into your twist, but it's not necessary. And twisting to the opposite side. And then bringing the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana. Bound angle pose. Slide the heels in towards your groin. Now if you're really like super tight here in the thighs, bring your hands behind you and start to lift your hips up just a little bit. This will release your groin and then come back into a straight spine. And this might be your Baddha Konasana right here. Bound angle pose or with the straight spine, start to forward fold. Maybe you use your elbows as an assist. 
into the legs as you pull. Couple more breaths. Breathe into that lower back. Breathe into that opening hip. And then lifting up, subtle change here, but makes all the difference in the posture, how it feels. Move your legs out so you form more of a diamond shape, soles of the feet together, and start to thread your wrists underneath the ankles. Round spine this time, like you're bringing the crown of the head into the soles of the feet. Again, this is a little bit of a yin like posture, allowing gravity to slowly melt you down towards the floor. If your hands are threaded underneath, your ankles lift up. Extend the legs straight for intense western stretch. So bringing the thighs together, ankles together. Maybe take that flesh, pull it back behind you so you have a nice broad base upon which to sit. Reaching the arms up, pull the navel and bum back. And forward fold, reach forward, forward, forward. Let the hands fall wherever they fall. Hands can come to the knees, shins, ankles. If the hands naturally come to the feet, just interlace your two piece fingers around the big toes and tug on the toes. Let the elbows bend. This is one of the most beneficial poses in the thousands of yoga asanas that there are stimulating the adrenal glands, nourishing the kidneys, opening the back side of the body completely. And lifting up out of your intense western stretch. Slide the hands back behind you and bend your knees. Just roll those shoulders. Get them out of the way. So if you feel like they're kind of stuck into your ears, roll them back and down. Press into the circles of the palms. You can stay here. Maybe drop the skull back or lift the hips up for reverse table. If you have any shoulder issues, this might not be the variation you want to do. The pressing into the circles of the palms, nevertheless. Connecting with the floor fully. And if your hips are up, lower them down. Bring the chin into the throat and lay all the way down onto your back. Knees stay bent. Just rock the knees from side to side. It's like a windshield wiper, releasing your lower back. I'm bringing the feet and knees hip width distance apart. Take your right ankle onto your left thigh. Press the knee away, flex the right foot. You can stay here or th thread that right hand between the two thighs. Pick that left knee up and pull it towards your heart. If you're very open, you can move those hands onto your left 
shin and pull that left knee in. Breath comes in handy here. Inhaling, expanding the hip joint, the back. Exhale. Inhale, press that right knee away. Exhale, pull that left knee in. It might be imperceptible to the eye, but you can feel how you're opening and growing and lengthening. And release your bind if you have it. And cross right thigh over left. Squeeze the, the thighs together. Arms out into a T. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale the knees over to your left elbow. Just allowing gravity to bring it down. If it's uncomfortable to intertwine your thighs like that, just stack your right knee over left. Look over your right shoulder. And bringing the knees back up and cross the legs. Rearrange your body once again so that the spine is straight, the feet and knees hip width distance apart, and then cross your left ankle on top of your right thigh. Flex the foot, press the knee away. If you bound on the first side, go ahead and bind on this side, threading your hand between the two thighs, interlacing your fingers to the webbing or all the way onto your right shin. And then opening with the strength of your breath alone. So take a nice deep breath, fill the body cavity. Notice what moves. Exhale, pull that right knee in a smidgen. Inhale, press left knee away. Exhale, pull right knee in. Exhale, press left knee away. And one more time, pull that right knee in. Release any kind of bind across your left thigh over right, squeeze the thighs together, arms out into a T, and let your knees fall to the right. Gaze, if your eyes were open, would be over your left middle finger. Bringing the knees back into your chest. Just pull the knees in so you feel the connection of your belly into your thighs. So kind of like a double wind relieving pose. If you'd really like to open up that lower back, you can slide your hands down, grab your feet, and then pull those knees into the armpits soles of the feet face the ceiling for happy baby pose. And then when you're ready, slide one leg out at a time so that your feet come to the corners of your mat. And then bring your arms about a foot or two away from your body, rolling one shoulder blade at a time underneath you. 
And on your next inhale, roll the head over to the right. And then exhale, roll your head over to the left. And then next time your head moves to the right, take a nice deep breath in. Hold the breath for four, three, two, one. And then exhale it to the center. Next time you inhale, roll your head over to the left. Take a nice deep breath in. Hold the breath for four, three, two, one. And then exhale, move the head to neutral, to center. Then allow yourself to completely surrender. Become as completely comfortable as you've ever been. If you have an eye pillow, if you have just a little hand towel that you'd like to place over your eyes, this is a nice way to end your practice and stay internally aware or putting a blanket on you. It will be here for the, the next four or five minutes. So get comfy, let go of all effort. Bringing your awareness to the right hand. Let all four fingers of the right hand completely surrender, curling all the way up with the thumb, letting go of whatever it was you were holding on to. And moving your awareness to the left hand, let all four fingers curl up along with the left thumb. Letting go of whatever was in that left hand. Bringing your awareness to the place between your eyebrows. If there's any creases in the eyebrows, smooth it out. In the place where your hairline and forehead meet. Smooth it out. Bringing your awareness to your jaw muscle, your joint in your jaw. Your lips can slightly part here, even though you're still breathing in and out through your nostrils so that your jaw can relax. It might be helpful to anchor the tip of your tongue just behind two front teeth to release the jaw in the back of the throat. If I may, I'll just read something I copied down from Pima Chodron. She's a Buddhist nun in her book, The Wisdom of No Escape. As humans with consciousness, we are subject to resistance of life's energies, but plants and animals do not resist. The four elements of earth, air, fire, water, dissolve one by one as we die. But while we're living, we share the energy. 
that makes everything. This energy, this life force, creates the whole world. So why do we resist our energy? Why do we resist the life force that flows through us? So if you'd like to slowly come out of your corpse pose, you can start to make fists by drawing your four fingers around your thumbs and start to circle your wrist joints awake and then start to join the ankle joints in a circle. And then starting to stretch awake, sweeping the arms behind you, stretching away. That feels good, like you just had this nice nap and you're slowly waking up and then bending one knee at a time, rolling over onto your favorite side into a fetal pose. And then eventually using the strength of your top arm to press yourself up into your final posture. Any kind of comfortable seat could be one leg out, one knee bent, Baddha Konasana, Sukhasana with one heel in front of the other, Indian style, whatever is comfortable for you to remain seated, close your eyes. And just as a tiny comparison from the first time we were here, just notice any differences, any sensations of those senses. Of the sense of sound. Sense of touch, maybe feel some sweat or coolness upon the skin now. A sense of smell. A sense of taste. A sense of emotion, feeling, naming one emotion that you experience at the moment. And then bringing palms together in front of your heart, coming back to that one noble truth that you know to be true in your heart of hearts, yet nobody ever had to teach it to you. And sealing your practice with that one noble truth bowing in to this prayer-like pose. We'll end our practice with that traditional Sanskrit word that loosely translated means the light in me bows to the beautiful lights in each of you. Namaste. So slowly opening your eyes if you'd like. And uh, I'm going to unmute you if you'd like to.
Vivian. Thank you. Where'd you go? There she is. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you Anne. It was great. Having you here. <laughs> I, I really did a number on my hair, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every week. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for uh, enjoying joining me in our new uh, firecracker pose. I liked it. We should do that more often. <laughs> that was good. Well, everybody have a great rest of the weekend and holiday if you're going somewhere. Or if not, just enjoy your time at home. Okay. Sure. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.